You are listening to PT on Ice, the older adult, a collaboration between the Senior Rehab Project and the Institute of Clinical Excellence. This is a rebroadcast of an original episode that can be found at ptonice.com. Hi, everyone. Christina Previtt here with the older adult version of PT on Ice. You'll notice that I am trying out some different lighting. As a business owner, we try some video marketing stuff, and so I'm using a new light. I hope that you're all having an amazing week, and it is already Wednesday. In terms of upcoming courses, um, Justin Dunway is starting his Persistent Pain online course May 7th. So if you're thinking about jumping onto his course, the time is running out. So make sure you try and do that. Today, I thought I would talk a little bit about FRIDS. So fall risk increasing drugs. So when we're thinking about falls prevention, we look at risk factors. The statistics on falls prevention are not new. We know that one in three older adults will experience a fall if they're over the age of 65 each year. Injurious falls happen in about 51% of those cases. And so trying to mitigate risk factors and ensure that we are um, doing everything that we can to try and prevent falls from happening is super important. As a physiotherapist that's working in an outpatient setting, working primarily with older adults, I often get clients coming in who are very medically complicated. We know that age is a risk factor for a whole slew of chronic conditions. And when we have those diagnoses, whether it be heart disease, mental health issues, diabetes, they're all associated with different medications. And the more medications we have, the more likely we are to have those interactions. And even though drug prescription is not necessarily directly in a PT's wheelhouse, uh, I know in a variety of settings, a, a, in particular home health, it's a necessary component for PTs to be doing a medication review, running interactions, and making sure that we are aware of any potential dangers that our clients are experiencing. I was doing a little bit of research and there was a really nice working group that had come together to do systematic reviews and meta-analyses on different falls risk increasing drugs and it got published uh, this month and I can put the link to the three scope or systematic reviews below in the comments. So they broke up the falls risk increasing drugs into three subcategories. They talked about cardiovascular drugs. So these are drugs that can be prescribed for anybody who has uh, any type of cardiovascular disease ranging from atrial fibrillation, um, previous myocardial infarct, heart failure, uh, or aortic valvular regurgitation, anything like that. Um, then they broke it up into psychotropics. And then the third group was others where we're looking at things like anti-epileptics, NSAIDs, analgesics things like that that we see are commonly prescribed in our older clients. Sorry, I have to do my momentary interlude for a dog interruption. So <laughs> let's talk about the cardiovascular drugs. So I'm going to, I have some slides kind of prepped here. So in terms of cardiovascular disease in older clients, in 2005, there was 2.5 million deaths in the U.S., and over 860,000 of them were attributable, attributable to some type of cardiovascular disease, with 82% of those deaths being in uh, adults who are over the age of 60. So that is a huge portion of uh, the, the deaths attributable to cardiovascular disease happening in older adults. 80 million Americans have at least one form of cardiovascular disease, and the risk of myocardial infarct is seven times higher in people who are 65 to 74 than for people who are in the 35 to 44 age group. So it's super, super important. So the way that they uh, broke up the medications was into vasodilators, antihypertensives, diuretics, loop diuretics, beta blocking agents, calcium channel uh, blockers, ACE inhibitors, angiotensin II antagonists, and alpha adrenal receptor antagonists. All these crazy names that we see all the time. 
But the two important parts, I like that they broke it down and they said, you know, the two big ones to look for are loop diuretics for increasing falls risk and beta blocking agents to decrease falls risk. And so the way that they did this, so a loop diuretic is a more intense diuretic. Um, so we're thinking Lasix, things with that, um, things like uh, bumetanide or Bumex, um, forzum, ooh, furosemide, which is Lasix and ethos crinic acid. Oh my gosh, I'm butchering these names. Etocrine. Um, these are diuretics that are sodium and potassium channel blockers that act on the loop of Henle of the kidney. They're often diagnosed as an antihypertensive or to decrease edema for people who have congestive heart failure or chronic kidney disease. And there was a, about a 40% increased risk for people who were on loop diuretics. Interesting, people who were not on loop diuretics and were actually on standard diuretics did not have that falls risk increased. So it's just this specific subclass of medications that seems to have um, some implications in falls and an unsteadiness. The other implication is that if individuals are at uh, increased risk of falls when on these medications, the other thing is that they're also at increased risk for fracture. Because what we know about loop diuretics is that they can have a negative impact on bone mineral density. So not only is the increased falls risk present now with those people who have had falls, we're more worried about an injury or a negative soliloquy happening from that fall. So really important for us to be doing a medication review and seeing if some of those LASIKs are present in our clients. The other thing that they were talking about um, was beta blockers having a protective effect. And what they beta blockers do for a quick review is that it blocks the effects of catecholamines, so epinephrine and norepinephrine, um, causing the heart to beat more slowly. For people working with older adults or adults in general on beta blockers, we know that because of this blunted heart rate response, when we're thinking about cardiac uh, rehabilitation and prescription of exercise programs, we often can't use heart rate as a measure of intensity because we aren't going to have that same response. But in relation to falls prevention, it might be something that's protective. And the authors of this uh, systematic review they kind of postulated that the reason might be because if individuals are having falls related to syncope, the beta blockers would actually blunt the sharp increase in catecholamines that happen before an individual experiences syncope and that syncope leads to a fall. And so this might be protective. And so these are the medications that have that OL lending. So metoprolol, um, and this prolol, uh, I always butcher these medications. Um, so these might be something that might be slightly protective. So that was kind of the, the review. What I thought was interesting with these medications is that when we started looking at falls risk factors, at first people were saying polypharmacy. You know, if individuals are on more than four medications, it's an increased risk for falls. As the literature has continued to develop in this area, we're starting to see that there's a stronger prediction for the actual subclass of medications that people are on and the interactions between some of those uh, increased risk drug classes and other cardiac medications. And so what's really important is for us to know that, you know, the more medications a person's on, the more like, likely they are to have some sort of negative or significant interaction that may affect their physical function. And then the second thing is that we know now that there are specific subclasses that should be on our radar. So things that we should be thinking like loop diuretics for somebody who is coming in with a cardiovascular complaint on top of their PT goals that may kind of put up a yellow flag in our head saying, okay, this may contribute to more unsteadiness issues with balance. I need to be conscientious of that and be aware of some of those interactions as I am developing my treatment plan. 
The other thing that I wanted to comment on these three systematic reviews, and this is a little bit um, kind of going into the nerdy statistics, statistics of it, is that when we're looking at systematic reviews, often as PTs working in clinic, we look at the odds ratio. So the odds ratio is a statistical test that allows us to see how much risk either increased or decreased from a reference value um, each individual medication would have in this circumstance. And so if one is the reference value of a person who doesn't fall, people who had an odds ratio above one were at increased risk for falls, or it's a falls risk increasing drug of FRID. If it was under one, then it's protective. So those beta blockers had an odds ratio that was less than one, showing a protective effect of these medications. Two important things to consider, though, when you're looking at the research one is the 95% confidence interval. So another one of the medications, I believe it was the alpha adrenergic antagonist. It had an odds ratio of 1.68, which was actually higher than the loop diuretics. The thing with that though, was that the 95% confidence interval crossed that one. So it was between 3.68 and 0.78, for example, which means that it wasn't a statistically significant finding and that there wasn't consistency across the literature. So showing an increased risk for falls with this subclass of medications. The other thing to consider is the heterogeneity value. So this is the I squared value. When we're thinking about trying to bring a whole bunch of information that is in different research groups and different research studies and synthesize them together, what we're looking at is the, the ability for us as statisticians and researchers to compare across outcomes. A really good example is um, the physical phenotype of frailty. We have five different physical characteristics. But there was a systematic review that showed that there was a, over 160 permutations of those five characteristics that were conceptualized and defined in different ways. And so the heterogeneity there would be high. So it might be that we're, we're looking at similar but potentially different populations of individuals that may be at differing risks of frailty. Or if we're looking, for example, at a two minute walk test versus a six minute walk test, are we really looking at the same thing? And so we have to look at those heterogeneity values to know how closely does the population they're looking at identify the population that we are seeing in clinic. And so I think that those two concepts, especially when we're looking at something like medications, which for me, like self admittedly is not a strength of mine. And I rely on, you know, colleagues that can help me when I'm having troubles with some of these interactions or some of the, the medications. And I get a lot of help from other clinicians. You know, these are some of those things that I need to make sure that I'm being conscientious of. All right. So takeaway points. Number one, loop diuretics, falls risk increasing drug by about 36%, odd ratio of 1.36. Beta blockers may actually be protective because it can blunt the spike in adrenaline that can happen as we may be closer to having a syncope event and therefore mitigate that event and therefore mitigate the fall. So falls risk increasing, loop diuretics, um, falls risk reducing, is beta blockers. And I will put the links for that systematic review. And if you're looking for the other two on psychotropics and others, I can definitely put those below. I hope you guys have an awesome week. We have another cohort of the modern management of the older adults starting June 12th. So if you are on the fence, you should definitely jump on the fence for the modern management course. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Bye. Hit me. Thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, go to ptonice.com, click on the courses tab, and check out Modern Management of the Older Adult. This is a course that myself and Christina Previtt are going to be teaching. It's eight weeks, an online format, interactive, and solely focused on helping students change how they practice and how they work with older adults. For more information, just go to ptonice.com. Thanks.